All right, Dad, Super Bowl Sunday. What is it like to play in a Super Bowl? I, I think it's almost when they when the game actually gets there, it's a big relief because of all the buildup. This year is way different because the buildup was way less. And I noticed that the Chiefs didn't even fly in until yesterday. So they treated it like a normal seasonal game travel wise. In the past, as you know, all the teams, the, both teams will have to show up a week ahead of time. So, so you don't get caught up in all all the side stuff going on with so many members of the press there and everybody asking you the same questions over and over again. Do you just, you just have your daughter this time asking you the same questions over and over again. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. What was the first Super Bowl that you played in? Super Bowl four, the chiefs and the Vikings in uh, January of 1970. 1970. And so yeah. do you remember that day? Yeah, it was in New Orleans in the old Tulane Stadium, and it was extremely cold. It had been cold all week in New Orleans, uh, more so than normal at that time of the year because it was early Jan. It was January 13th, and as I recall, and uh, <clears throat> it was hard to practice because it was so cold, but uh, that wasn't a re the reason the Chiefs won the game. They had a <laughs> great team. What? And then, then well, I played again in Super Bowl XI uh, against the Raiders for the Vikings. And then I was on the Rams team that lost to the last of the great Steeler teams in that four, four Super Bowl run. Uh, Terry Bradshaw and everybody, Lynn Swan, all those guys. So three Super Bowls, but no Super Bowl wins. No, no. But I, hate to, I hate to underscore that, but I just want <laughs> to. Yeah. Like, what yeah, They were great experiences. What, was, what do you remember most about any of those games? Does one memory stand out more than others? Well, I think the biggest disappointment was the uh, Raider game because we started out great with a block punt against Ray Guy, who's in the Hall of Fame for only punt he ever got blocked in his career. And uh, we didn't score. And then all of a sudden you could just see the Raiders come on strong. And of course, John Madden, uh, that was his Super Bowl win. And they had a really good team. So, But it was disappointing because I thought that was the best chance we had of the three. And when you went into the Super Bowl, the very first one, Super Bowl four. I should know this. What Super Bowl is it today? God, I think it's 55, isn't it? I, yeah, I got to check that. I should yeah. know that. That's bad preparation on my part. As a, as a, I'm going to look it up right now. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to mess up the recording. But um, what what were what was your position when you that first Super Bowl? Because the league was, was so young. Punter. Yeah, the, I was a punter, and the Super Bowl didn't have all the big to do that it does today. I mean, it was a sellout and all that, but. I, I came across the ticket, Jen, and I'll get back to you on it. I want to say the ticket maybe was $25. might not even have been that much. But there were 82,000 people at Tulane Stadium. And uh, it, it was a, a big game, big time, but it was only a week after the conference championship game. So you didn't have much of a chance to prepare for a team that you had never played before. Well, you, you mentioned the price of the tickets. I, I, always, I always like mentioning this fun fact about yeah. your first year in the league. And because when you say professional, oh, my dad played professional football, everyone has this, this image of, you know, a fancy car, aviator sunglasses, you know, designer yeah. suits. And it was a little bit, it was a little bit different. My mom, your wife, yeah. was a public school teacher at the time. So can you tell us that? I mean, it's just an unbelievable fact to know what you my were making. My first year, the year before the Super Bowl, I made $9,000 counting the bonus, the $2,000 bonus. And your mom made 10 teaching. <laughs> We weren't living together yet. We weren't married. So between us, we made 19000 The Super Bowl year, I think my contract was $17,000 uh, because of a couple of bonuses. But the, the preseason was the really tough time because we made $10 a day for six preseason games every day. And we got room and board, and they played to sell out crowds all around the country because the NFL was testing markets in those days to see. You know, my first touchdown pass was again was against the Dolphins up in Tampa Bay because the Dolphins would go up there once or twice a year to play games to test that market. Now here you are, years later, and Tampa Bay's had a team forever, and and uh, they're hosting a Super Bowl. So, so when they. I, I was looking at something last night. I wanted to see what the minimum salary was for a football player. Because. Down. Now, yeah. which isn't is, it four hundred thousand? So yes, I mean, it's over. It's almost five hundred thousand dollars. And then I yeah. couldn't quite figure it out because it depended upon how many years in the league exactly what your practice squad position right. was. But it looked like for for some, if you were on the practice squad for an NFL team, you made twelve thousand dollars minimum a week. So that gives us some comparison yeah. to ten dollars a day. <laughs> in the preseason. <laughs> 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and then if you're on the cab squad, then it was $350 a week. So what do you, I mean, when we think about football now and, and you, I mean, I'm, first of all, it sounds pretty good, right? To play football now compared to, compared yeah. to, but what yeah, do you think yeah. that meant for the league and how it's changed things? Just the, just the overwhelming amount of money and production well, and all of, of that. The, some of the percentages on profit are probably the same as they were then, or it's grown because well, there's so much television now and there's so much airtime to fill that uh, networks have paid an awful lot of money for the right to do it. We had to go on strike at least three times in my career and uh, shut down some games, which we didn't really want to do just to get up to minimum levels of things. Mm. Uh, the good th part about that was most of us worked in the off season and, and got careers and, and, uh, well, you had that, to, that was better. Yeah. But out of necessity, that's correct. But I think uh, a lot of the younger guys today, uh, they're paid to show up and work out in the off season and things like that. And it, and it curtails in many cases, the, the chance to, um, to build a, a second right. career until you're totally out of football. So that's an interesting fact too, that when at one point in your career, you were playing professional football, but then you were teaching, substitute teaching? Substitute teaching. the first. I went to grad school the first three springs and then uh, was substitute teaching. Then I, I taught three off seasons, half a class load at City College of San Francisco. And during all that time is when I got my real estate license too and got into the business in 1974. So my last seven or eight years in football, I had an off season job. The, the whole time I had off season work one way or another. I mean, that's, that, that, that's wild though. I mean, if you really think about it, that... I mean, any number of these players, I think that's something people to imagine today. They're watching the Super Bowl, all these guys really famous, and that at one time, you know, Tom Brady would have been like, you know what, I actually need to work in the offseason. I'm going to go substitute teach at the junior college. <laughs> like, you know, it's not such... on Tom. Tom's done an awful good job. Yeah, it, right. Okay so, that, okay, so let's get to the game today. Is yeah. What is one thing that you can tell us or an observation or a reflection about the Super Bowl that will make us a little bit smarter about this Super Bowl? Well, I think this is a little bit different because in Super Bowl, you know, as I mentioned early on, we had never played the Chiefs. Many times teams haven't played each other during the season. And both these teams played each other in week 12 of the season. Uh, Tampa Bay had been winning and then had hit a little down streak and, uh, the Chiefs ended up winning the game 27 to 24 and clinched their division. But from uh, and so they could Andy Reid could change his whole philosophy for the resting certain guys and all that, whereas Tampa Bay had to keep going. And the big difference was it was uh, two different games. In the first half, uh, this kid, Tariq Hill for the Chiefs, had 236 yards receiving in the first half uh, two over. I think it was over 200, maybe in the first quarter and a couple touchdowns, but uh, Tampa Bay came back and uh, nearly won the game. So these teams know each other pretty well. They've both got really good head coaches, Andy Reid and Bruce Arians, and uh, good guys that uh, attention to detail, uh, let their coaches coach the right way, and uh, and they look like they're, they're teams that get along well with the coaching staffs and, uh, you know, usually that's the case with successful teams anyway, but the guys are listening to what they're hearing and they're working on certain things and, uh, and uh, they're both exciting teams to watch. Kansas city has so much speed that it's really hard to cover them, but they, I understand they're both their offensive tackles are going to be out for the game and that can affect uh, how Mah Mahomes does. He's a great athlete, and with all the speed they have, they take chances that maybe other teams wouldn't take, and they get they get away with it two years in a row. And on the other side, you got Tom Brady, and they've adjusted that offense to, and uh, he he now knows the receivers better than he even did in Week Twelve. So I I think it's going to be a really good game. Well, yeah. Dad, I I always look forward to to watching these games with you. I'm sad that we're not together this year to watch. And the me game. too. And I, people can see how much fun it is to actually watch football with someone that knows what's going on. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, yeah. which is good. So, okay, yeah. final question: Because do you get like, is it exciting for you to watch the game? Does it make you like melancholy? Like, how do you how do you feel when you watch the games now? Well, I wouldn't say mel melancholy, but it's it's fun to watch it, and that's why it's such so popular. The great thing about sports is you never know what's going to happen. You know, that's the great thing. It's like a, a mystery novel or something. You know, it's it's not planned ahead. I mean, everybody does a lot of planning, 
but the unplanned situations happen and that's how the teams react to them and uh it'd be interesting to see because tampa bay had played the same defense all year and i'm sure they're going to make some adjustments after the success that kansas city had in week 12 and they had a lot of and tampa bay has a great defense one of the things that you've talked to me about over the years which was one of the great things about playing for the nfl and playing football was you had a lot of different guys from a lot of different places a lot of different backgrounds and then you get to be on the field together and you're this team and in these certain moments it's just magic and i i wonder if you just talk about that just a little bit because it's been such a a crazy year there's been so much going on you know from last football season to this football Football season. Well, remember the I Super Bowl last would, year to now. Yes. It's like the world yeah. changed. Well, and I think we uh, the the U.S. needs to get back to that team concept. Yeah, but it was one of the things that you really enjoyed about playing football. Was without a doubt, it was great. Yeah, yeah. All right, Dad. Well, it's always great to hear you talk about football and now we can wa- we can watch the game a little bit smarter i have a feeling that we're gonna have a lot of people all over america being like well you know <laughs> well hopefully to this analysis about <laughs> hopefully it's a good game i think it w- really will be a good game i'd be surprised if it wasn't all right well we'll i feel more excitement about going into it so thanks dad i appreciate thanks. the uh, the expertise Always in making great. us smarter all right love you i love you too bye-bye